A holiday favorite is happening today and our own Steve Spreester is emceeing the annual Light the Way Holiday Festival at the University of Incarnate Word. This will be the 36th year of the event. There will be live music, food trucks, fun for the kids, including appearance by Santa, and of course, those millions of twinkling lights and fireworks at the end of the night. It all starts at 3 p.m. at UIW. Zoo lights also back at the San Antonio Zoo. Visitors can now enjoy the holiday lights where also, while also visiting their favorite zoo animals. Zoo lights powered by CPS Energy and the president and CEO of the San Antonio Zoo say guests are in for a treat. And listen, even if you've never gone before, there are new realms to experience. Tons of holiday photo opportunities, immersive light shows and displays, and special animal interactions you won't find anywhere else. So Zoo Lights is free for members that are, uh, include a standard admission. And you can check it out starting right now through January 1st. They also have camel rides. Ooh. I didn't do it last night when I went to Zoo Lights. Um, but couple years ago they have camel rides and it's fun That's and super cool. they give you hot chocolate and and the it, it was so much fun nice it sounds like a good time i'm gonna have to check it out myself yeah, yeah. time is 8 57 41 degrees so to come at nine a training squadron with military working dogs has an opportunity to show off their skills in and outside of combat we'll look at how it works plus this inspirational group is dancing in the dark how they're breaking boundaries for the blind just ahead. A mother is left wanting answers after her son was dropped off at the wrong bus stop. What the district is saying. And taking a look outside, we are starting to see a little bit of the city. The roadways there. We'll be checking in with Sarah to learn how the week is going to play out. Good morning. It's nine o'clock on this cold and clammy Saturday morning. It's always a pleasure to be able to join you, Sarah. Love to have it's, you, Jonathan. It's always a great time. It's November 19th, and we're all, we have about, about a week and a half left of November. No shave November. Your right. beard looks phenomenal. Thank you. Thank you. You know, I really enjoy this time because I get a break from shaving, but I also know that I'm contributing towards a good cause, and that really, you, you just, we feel good about it. If you want to donate, for Team KSAT, and, and then on, and on, and on behalf of Jonathan, just head to KSAT.com and do it. Yes, please. <laughs> do it. I can Jonathan. use all the donations. <laughs> <laughs> Jonathan, I bet that beard keeps you a little warm, too. It does, especially <laughs> when I'm reporting in the field. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And if you have to be outside today, I'm sorry. It's going to be damp, chilly, blustery all day long. Here's a look at the radar right now. You can see around San Antonio, we're dealing with rounds of moderate rainfall, light to moderate rainfall, with a more moderate shield of rain through New Braunfels, up San Marcos to Kyle, and even across parts of the hill country, dealing with some light rain as well for areas like Bernie, Fredericksburg, Kerrville. And as we take a look at the Trans Guide cameras, this is 281 at 410 West. And over here, we've got 281 at Hildebrand. You can see that the road conditions are pretty damp. You know, you're going to need that windshield wiper. This is a 30, uh, 90 at Couples, rather. Uh, and again, 90 at Medio Creek. Uh, again, just a damp day today. Now, although coverage out there is about 80%, we'll see coverage come down a little bit this afternoon, but it's still going to be a day where we'll have rounds of light to moderate at rainfall, even though coverage will be less this afternoon. Temperatures out there right now, right near 40 degrees, 41 in San Antonio, 39 in Bulverde, 36 in Bernie, 44 in Hondo, 41 in New Braunfels. But here's the catch. This is as warm as it's going to be today. We may even see temperatures go down by a couple of degrees throughout the day, right around 40 in San Antonio, 80% light rain. And then for tomorrow, just a few showers possible, but you'll notice it stays cloudy throughout the day and throughout the weekend. Now, I've got to look ahead, though. We are eventually going to be seeing the sun. I'll have a look at Thanksgiving week, too, in just a few minutes. Jonathan and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. One person is in the hospital in critical condition, and four others are in custody after a fight that ended with a shooting at South Park Mall in the food court. This happened yesterday evening. San Antonio police say the fight was between two groups of either teenagers or young adults. They explained the groups had some sort of history but didn't exactly say what. That history led to the fight. The crowd at the mall and the suspects scattered after the shooting. Police scanned the area on the ground and from above with their chopper um, swarming in HEB before catching the people they were looking for. One witness at the mall told us what he saw. Seeing his brother like hovering over him, like screaming like he's losing too much blood. 
I, I didn't know like how to feel at the time. Like the, the individual was just like bleeding out in front of me and his brother was like screaming hysterically. Police explained the shooting was an isolated incident. As for South Park Mall, they are expected to be open today. A mother wants answers after a Northside ISD bus driver dropped her five-year-old son off at the rung bus stop and left. The Cable Elementary Kindergarten student was found safe and able to get home okay, but his mom says he was almost an hour late. She received a call from a stranger at an apartment complex 32 minutes away. A woman found her son wandering outside. She opened his backpack and found a note with Terry's phone number. The school district released this statement that reads in part, we are investigating what may have prompted our, or contributed to the student getting off at the incorrect location. This should not have happened and will take necessary measures to ensure this incident does not happen again. Y'all keep saying, I'm sorry this shouldn't happen. I'm a, you, I understand that, but it happened. So what, what are we going to do to change it? What are we going to do to fix it? Terry says she's not sure if she'll allow her son to ride the bus again. She wants the drivers involved to be held accountable. This morning, the 17th annual Rackspace Technology and Nature Sweet Food Distribution is in full swing. Families on the northeast side of town are lining up for a fresh Thanksgiving meal. Our Camelia Wattis is out there now. Camelia, so who are these, these meals going to exactly? Well, they're going up, uh, Sarah, Jonathan, they're going to lots of families here in the Windcrest area, and a lot of them have already registered for these meals. They've been waiting for hours, and you can kind of see that they're starting to line up. You can see we have a lot of cars that have been here. I was told that some of the cars have been here since 3 a.m., but like I said, they have registered to be here. And with me from the San Antonio Food Bank is Michael Guerra. He's going to tell us what is in these uh, kits that all of these families are receiving this morning. So how are you? Good morning and a cold morning in San Antonio. But what a resilient community we have. Great volunteers from Rackspace, from Nature Suite out today uh, to fill cars. There's a dozen items that are going to go in the cars today. Staples that you'd expect, rice and beans and vegetables. But the holiday turkey, that's the last item. And I know the families, they're really excited about that because every car here would be skipping that turkey except for today. That's important, especially because this year, and I'm sure everybody is feeling it, but the cost of everything is skyrocketing. So tell us why it's important this year to provide these kinds of meals. You know, these are hardworking, low-income families in San Antonio, and many of them just have a season of need that might be now. But what we've seen is kind of the families that we're serving are worse off than they were before the pandemic. They might have gotten a three or five percent raise on the, you know, on the backside of the pandemic, but inflation went eight, twelve, rents were maybe twenty percent up. And so they're, they're really struggling now. And that's why everybody coming through at this time of year is so important. Absolutely, absolutely. I think that we're, you can, I want you to take a look over here. Oh, see how we had all the volunteers preparing so much food. I know we have Nature Suite that brought in uh, tomatoes, all of those tomatoes, pallets of them, and all of these cars lining up. Stay with us for the next half hour. We're gonna keep talking to people from the food bank and figure out why, or not figure out, but talk about why it's important to be thankful and to keep giving this holiday season. Back to you, Sarah, Jonathan. Thank you, Camelia. Happening today, Spectrum is hosting a free community resource fair at San Antonio College's Victory Center from noon to 3 p.m. There will be entertainment for you and the family, turkey and ham giveaways. The resource fair will also feature a variety of health care and energy and transportation resources that everyone who attends can have access to. So that address again on your screen right now, 1819 North Main Avenue. Also happening tonight, a celebration of the arts. The Luminaria Contemporary Arts Festival starts at 6 p.m. and goes until midnight. It's a free festival open to the public. The outdoor festival celebrates film, music, theater, and so much more. Throughout the event, some of the things that will be happening there will be large structural installations, digital art, and art performances. The, fe the festival takes place downtown. And of course, for more information, you can visit the website on your screen, luminariasa.org. If you go to any of those events, make sure you take your rain gear and bundle up. That's right. It's 908 and 40 degrees. Today on Texas Eats, David Elder shows us a hidden gem in San Antonio featuring steak and fries. 
And new developments from the investigation on the deadly shooting on the set of the movie Rust. A report now being released to the public. More on that coming up. 40 degrees at 9.08. And there it is. That pretty much sums up what it feels like, looks like outside. We have some light showers throughout the day. It's going to be very cold. How long will this trend continue for? Sarah Spivey will let us know when we come back. Welcome back, and we start the half hour with the new developments from the investigation into the deadly shooting on the set of the movie Rust, where actor Alec Baldwin was holding the gun that killed cinematographer Alnia Hutchins. The Santa Fe Sheriff's Office releasing the report to the public. ABC's Phil Lipoff joins us with the details. This morning, Santa Fe police releasing a report more than a year in the making. More than 550 pages revealing what investigators have discovered about the fatal shooting on the set of Rust. The report including texts from Alec Baldwin after handling the loaded gun that fatally shot cinematographer Helena Hutchins and injured director Joel Souza. Baldwin texting his assistant, I have to delete my archive just two days after the shooting. His attorney releasing a statement saying Mr. Baldwin was referring to his Twitter archive which he has long considered deleting. The report also contains excerpts from interviews with people who were there that day, including director Joel Souza. Investigators say Joel stated at some point he remembers the armorer, Hannah Gutierrez, standing over him hysterically yelling, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It was more than a year ago in Santa Fe, New Mexico, when Hutchins was killed during rehearsal for a scene in that low-budget western. In an interview with George Stephanopoulos last December, Baldwin adamant he did not pull the trigger, which he still maintains to this day. It wasn't in the script for the trigger to be pulled. Well, the trigger wasn't pulled. I didn't pull the trigger. So no. you never pulled the trigger? No, 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 no. This was clearly an accident, but perhaps a criminal accident. Just because something is an accident doesn't mean that a criminal act didn't occur. Just last week, Baldwin trying to clear his name, filing a lawsuit against the armorer and some members of the crew, he says are responsible for handling the loaded gun. They have denied being responsible for the shooting. The DA said they are still making decisions about who, if anyone, will be charged, and they won't be making those announcements until after Thanksgiving. Back here at home, it's 913 and 40 degrees. That's right, and we're going to be taking a look into weather and seeing how the week is going to play out. Sarah, what's in store for us? Um, well, today is going to be damp, blustery, and cold. We're really not going to be seeing uh, much uh, away from warming up around San Antonio for at least a couple of days here. So as we take a look at the live radar right now, we've got some heavier rain that's just moved out of Lavaca County, more moderate rain along I-35 from Austin to San Marcos. But around San Antonio in the Hill Country, we've got light rain in Kerrville, Fredericksburg, Bernie. Uh, but in San Antonio itself, some pockets of moderate rain passing through parts of the city. Let's go ahead and take a closer neighborhood view at where some of the heavier rain is falling. Right now inside Loop 410 on the uh, south east side of town, right along that 410 uh, area there on the southeast side of town between China Grove and Calaveras Lake. Then on the northwest side of town near Leon Valley, Right, this pocket in between the loops 1604 and 410. So Oakland Estates, Marshall High School area near Clark High School and De Zavala as well. Uh, and then right along Bandera to the east of Bandera, there heavier patch of rain pushing through. And these are moving to the east at about uh, 35, 40 miles per hour. So we can actually put a track on this. If you are in a neighborhood east of this, uh, closer to, let's say, Kentwood Manor, Stone Oak area. This will be making it to you around 930 this morning. So we are going to be seeing some pockets of heavier rain within the light rain showers on and off throughout the day. And again, we do not anticipate it raining all the time all day, but really just passing light to moderate rain showers. Let me take you through the future cast here. This is a snapshot close to about lunch, and you can see again pockets of moderate rain within light rain itself. Up in 
the hill country, there is the possibility for some sleet mixed in with the rain, not here in San Antonio, but up in the hill country. Now, road temperatures are well above freezing, so we do not anticipate any kind of major impacts from any ice uh, mix up in the hill country. And again, here in San Antonio, we expect mainly just a cold rain. Look at the snapshot later on tonight. This is eight o'clock not as active as it is out there this morning, but still some areas of light rain. So coverage of the rain is going to decrease after the midday hours, but we're still going to have some light rain in the forecast. Even overnight, a passing shower is possible and early tomorrow morning will be in the low 40s, near 40 degrees around San Antonio. Most will just be experiencing cloudy morning, but there will be pockets of light rain as well. Tomorrow coverage though about 30%. Then once again by Sunday night into Monday morning, morning, we'll see the radar start to look a lot like it does out there right now. So just to summarize everything I just said there, best coverage of rain right now through about the midday hours. Then tonight, tomorrow, only 30% coverage. Sunday night into Monday, we'll see that coverage go up again, and we'll finally see rain exit by Monday in the evening. As far as rainfall goes, we've already seen about a quarter of an inch of rain at the airport, perhaps through about Monday, we'll see about half an inch of rain in spots. 41 degrees outside, but this is the warmest it's going to be all day. Temperatures are going to be falling. 44 in Hondo, 44 in Uvalde, 37 in Kerrville, 41 in New Braunfels. Some areas experiencing the 30s, like in Bulverde, Helotus, Bandera. But with the wind from the north at 15 miles per hour, it feels like it's in the 30s. And this is going to be another big thing today. Wind chill all day in the 30s for us. Temperatures are going to be falling to near 40 degrees, but the wind chill will be in the 30s with gusts up to 30 miles per hour. So bundle up your case at 12 hour forecast 80% rain coverage through about noon. Then we'll see that rain coverage slowly get lower in the afternoon, but still a few showers out there and near 40 degrees as we head into the chilly evening hours. Uh, as we look ahead to tomorrow, only 30% coverage 45 degrees for the high. That's it. Monday will still be struggling to get out of the 40s after that morning rain. Then finally, by Tuesday, Wednesday, we'll see a little sun and temperatures will be down to 70 degrees by Thanksgiving. But here's the thing. I expect another cold front on Thanksgiving for us guys, but this one not as potent and probably not going to see much rain with it as well, but we'll keep you updated. Well, that's music to my ears, so I'll take it. Yeah, I'll a little bit it. of something for everyone, right? Oh, yeah. Really puts you in the holiday spirit, this kind of chilly does. weather. All right, it's 40 degrees and 918. Next, a look at where you and your family can see Christmas lights in San Antonio today and tomorrow. First, let's take a look at these lotto numbers. Pick three, one, two, four, fireball three, daily four, four, six, nine, four, fireball two. Cash five, two, three, eight, 28, 33. And let's take a look at the Mega Millions. Mega Millions is two, 14, 16, 38, 66. That lucky number nine and Mega Plier four. A holiday favorite is happening today, and our own Steve Spreester is emceeing the annual Light the Way Holiday Festival at the University of the Incarnate Word. This will be the 36th year of the event. There will be live music, food trucks, fun for the kids, including an appearance by Santa, and of course, those millions of twinkling lights and fireworks to end the night. It all starts at UIW's main campus off of Broadway and Hildebrand at 3 p.m. Zoo Lights is back at the San Antonio Zoo starting today. Visitors can enjoy the holiday lights while also visiting their favorite zoo animals. Zoo Lights is powered by CPS Energy and the president and CEO of San Antonio Zoo says guests are in for a treat. And even if you haven't been there before, there are new realms to experience. Tons of holiday photo opportunities, immersive light shows and displays and special animal interactions you won't find anywhere else. Zoo Lights is a free, uh, it's free for members and included in standard admission. You can check it out starting tomorrow through January 1st. They had a special media night last night uh, before opening day, so some of us at KSAT went. It was so much fun. I recommend the hot chocolate, maybe a little rum chata Ooh. in the hot chocolate for the adults. <laughs> All right, it's 923 and 40 degrees. And next, a look at some steak and fries in today's Texas Eats.
One is a traditional, we have the value steak, which is a cool It's a different cut, very tender as well. We cook it sous vide to ensure a perfect medium rare, and we top it with a nice house-made peppercorn sauce. All right, so here we go. You have that nice little peppercorn sauce, like you said, right here made in-house, poured right on top. A little steak and frites, right? You got the little uh, potatoes on the side as well. Cheers, and I'm gonna dip it in here. You want to get a little dip action on there? Come on, get some more sauce on there. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That's the bite. Oh. More love. Like that. <laughs> Give me this sauce right here. This is it. Oh my goodness. Oh my, my goodness. My stomach is, is growling exactly right. right now. <laughs> my mic doesn't too. pick up. You're not lying. Now I am either, I don't know if I'm craving steak and fries or that brunch, brunch breakfast. Everything. Everything. <laughs> Time and temperature is 927, folks, and 40 degrees outside. All right. Damn. Good morning, San Antonio. Thank you for joining us. It's 9.30, it's Saturday, and it's cold outside, Sarah. It's cold. It's, no, it's a cold November 19th. <laughs> and I know there's a lot of events outside today, Jonathan and there Sarah. Sure there's Light the Way, Luminaria. And Sarah, I mean, if you're going to be heading out, what do people need to know? They need to know that it's going to be damp blustery and cold all day long. You know, we won't see as much coverage on the radar this afternoon, but we're still going to have the chance for rain into the afternoon. And as we take a look at a snapshot of the radar right now, you can see that really northern San Antonio is dealing with the more moderate rainfall. In fact, moderate rainfall falling over the 1604 and 281 interchange right now at the moment. Now, as we look at Transguide, there is a crash up there in uh, the northern part of Bear County, right? at thousand uh, at TPC a uh, part of me thousand Oaks uh, you can see that there's a crash happening. It's backing up the northbound lanes of 281 for about um, two miles all the way back toward Bitters. So as you're heading north along 281 today, know that from Bitters to Thousand Oaks, that's where the crash is right now. Otherwise, we're seeing okay conditions out there. 281 at Hildebrand just damp. And today, 80% chance of showers through about the midday hours. 80% coverage. This afternoon, less coverage, 40 degrees, and it's going to be cold gusts up to 30 miles per hour. So today damp, blustery and cold tomorrow. Not as much rain, but still cold and cloudy. And as we look at this week, we'll have some th sun by Thanksgiving. I'll have a look ahead coming up in just a bit. This morning on a shooting last month in New Braunfels, a reward is being offered for the two suspects on your screen police are looking for. This is 18-year-old Eric Incharareggi and 18-year-old Aiden Valdez. New Braunfels police believe they're linked to a shooting on Rush Lane last month. Both have active arrest warrants for aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. Officers already have two suspects in custody, but these two 18-year-olds still on the run. If you know where they are, you can call the Comal County Crime Stoppers line. That number is 830-620 on your screen now, TIPS. You may be eligible for a $4,000 reward. And the 341st training squadron at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland hosted its first ever military working dog expo. That's right, and I had the opportunity to be there. The expo gives an, an opportunity to showcase the skills these canine defenders put to use in and outside of combat and security operations. The dogs are procured and then we train them up to um, 120 days and then they go out to be military working dogs for the actual military as qualified um, military working dogs. But not all the dogs that head out to boot camp make the cut for service and many who have served are up for retirement. They're good sweet dogs. They're either retired, they served in the field and came back here or they were training aides and they trained our new handlers in our military working dog handlers course otherwise we do have some that just didn't meet our strenuous training requirements and some that just weren't meant to be a military working dog which means they'll need a cozy home and a loving family to go to and there are adoption programs in place to make sure that happens to me that's a big program because these dogs have worked very very hard and very long some of them don't make it some of them do make it but they deserve the right to be in front of a fireplace when they retire I mean we go home I think they should 
be able to do the same. So if people and if you're looking for more of a temporary situation where you can help mold a future warrior, that's an option too. Uh, I have two litters that are uh, cooking right now. Uh, they're due to be born uh, December 12th and 12th and 13th, and they'll be going out to fosters in late January. So I got about 15 puppies probably that are going to need foster homes here pretty soon. I have a few people on the list, but we need more. So come on, you guys can do this. It'll be fun. If you don't have more than three dogs at home, don't have any children under five, have a large backyard with a tall fence and no cats, you could be eligible to give these highly trained warriors a home to live their best life. I love this story so much, Jonathan. <laughs> um, okay, so a couple of questions. How old are these dogs? You said there's that there's two groups, really. Yes, there's two groups. The ages vary. You have your retirees who are a little bit on the older side. You know, they've, they've gone to war, they've gone to combat. And then, of course, uh, the, the two litters that have yet to be born, uh, they're looking for, for homes to be, you know, foster them. So the older ones are about seven to eight years old? Yes. They retire around then? Yes. And then these other ones are maybe like seven months to two years, the ones that don't make it? The Correct. Program. The ones who don't make the cut. And by that, it's just the, the requirements are so strict that it could just be the, the most most to my new school detail about the dog that disqualifies them. So if you adopt these dogs, you're getting already highly trained dogs. That's, the that's, ones, the retirees and the ones that just didn't, didn't make And that's program. what's so exciting about the fostering program is that you're getting just a, such, not only a, the quality breed, but such a smart and already highly trained dog. So. Where can people look if they want to adopt one of so these So if you're angels? interested, oh yeah, so if you're interested in adopting or fostering one of these uh, heroes, as I like to call them, uh, you can head on over to our website, ksat.com. Look for this story. I've included a telephone number and, of course, an email that you can reach out to. Jonathan, thank you so much for doing this story. My pleasure. Of course, and hundreds of Thanksgiving meals are being passed out right now at the Rackspace Technology Headquarters. Our Camelia Wattis is live there in the Windcrest area. And Camelia, so who is benefiting from these meals? Jonathan, Sarah, it's 500 families in the Windcrest area who have already registered for um, this food giveaway. And you can see hundreds of them are still lining up. They're still picking up. They got their trunks open and these rack space volunteers are dropping them off in the back of their trucks. But all of this food was donated by the San Antonio Food Bank. And we know that this year things are costing a lot more. And so this year it's especially important, these types of food giveaways. So here to talk with me more about how people can help and why it's important is Eric Cooper from the San Antonio Food Bank. How are you? Good morning. And you know, it's incredible to see families when they're receiving this turkey because they're so anxious, they're so worried that they would not be able to provide Thanksgiving for their kids, for their loved ones. And so for us to be able to provide a Thanksgiving turkey so that they too can experience Thanksgiving, it's just incredible. And that's important, and that's important. But so I know we have lots of volunteers out here. It's cold out here. How can families at home help if they wanted to help? How, what ways? Well, we've got lots of distributions that still need to occur before Thanksgiving. So we're gonna need lots of volunteers. You can go to our website. That's the easiest way to get involved. You can register to volunteer like the Rack Space and Nature Suite volunteers, or you can donate money. That's the best thing now to donate a turkey to a family. We still have several thousand turkeys we're trying to get in and get out. And so if you can help us do that, that would be great. You can always drop off a non-perishable food item at any HEB or Security Service Federal Credit Union. Um, but online, our website tells you everything you need to know. If you're in need of a turkey, please go to our website, register. We want to help you. But together, we'll enjoy a Thanksgiving here in San Antonio. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm having a coughing fit. Back to you, Sarah and Jonathan. All right, Camilla, thank you so much. Get some water there, okay? Well, wedding bells will soon ring out at the White House. President Biden's granddaughter is getting married on the South Lawn today. Now, Naomi Biden is the daughter of Hunter Biden and his ex-wife, Kathleen Buell. She's marrying Peter Neal. Weddings are rare at the White House. So far, only nine children of American presidents have held their weddings at the White House. The only president to get married there, Grover Cleveland, back in 1886. 
And Thanksgiving just days away and the holiday turkey will likely be more expensive this year due to things like inflation and outbreaks of the avian flu, bird flu. So this year, some turkey farmers are dealing with bird flu outbreaks while other factors like inflation are impacting the rising cost of turkeys. Updated biosecurity protocols were implemented the last bird flu outbreak in 2015. So some farmers feel like there was the that that was the reason for their flocks dodging the outbreaks. To say that we feel fortunate uh, would be an understatement. We feel very, very fortunate to have been spared. Turkey prices are up across the board at Ferndale. They say that has more to do with inflation than anything else, with the price of fresh turkey up 10 to 15 percent compared to last year. I mean, we're seeing it here at the food bank, too. I mean, uh, you were just out. We saw right. Camelia yeah. out there at Rackspace. Um, so if you are looking for a way to give back to the community this holiday season, this Thanksgiving and December, the food bank is a good place to do that. Absolutely. There's nothing like helping others uh, through food, for sure. Time is 940. Temperature is 40 degrees. This inspirational group is dancing in the dark just ahead, breaking boundaries for the blind. And taking a look outside through live cam and no sight of San Antonio. I know you're there. I know you're there. <laughs> we but, know uh, you're there. <laughs> Thank you for watching. <laughs> it's, it's a cold one, San Antonio. Stay warm. From ballroom to hip hop, as dancers waltz and twirl across the stage, whatever the style, there's no denying dance is a visual art. As RJ Marquez reports, for one dance company, the students are proving there's more than meets the eye. Five, six, and five, six, seven, eight. Ronald, Kenny, Barbara, Lee, and Elena are learning to dance. But that's not all that they have in common. I am completely blind with light perception. I don't see face, faces, I see colors. What I see is shadows. They're all members of one of the first all-blind dance companies. Our whole organization is about empowering the lives of the visually impaired uh, through dance. Led by a professional Latin ballroom dancer and instructor, Haidia Mohammed is developing her own method to teach dancers through touch and sound. I try to push the dancers, think outside the box. My step wants to be shoulder width apart, out, around, close. And she'll stand in front of you and you can feel her hips to her feet to see what they're doing. She teaches us spotting techniques that are very helpful. She is extremely patient. And with less than 2% of paying dance gigs going to people with disabilities, Hydea hopes to change that and motivate others to not lose sight of their dreams. It's showing the world that no matter what happens to you in your life, there's nothing you can't do. The Blind Dance Company is raising money to help provide the dancers with access to professional instruction, competitions, and festivals. Hydea is also teaching virtually and now has students nationwide. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. Such an inspirational story. Though. Absolutely, and the great thing here is that you don't need to be able to see when you're dancing because you have to feel the music. Right. And uh, it's, it's really nice to see that. Thank you, RJ, for that story. It's 40 degrees at 946 this morning. Sarah, um, I know we had some kind of, oh, we're going to go to traffic because yeah. the roads were wet this morning, and I'm that obviously can lead to some, some crashes out there. That's right. That's right. The roads were wet. Um, take a look at the traffic uh, trans guide right now, and you can see... And you can see that uh, some showers. There we go. My mic was off for there a second there. Awesome. Trying Sorry to help you out there, Sarah. Thank you. <laughs> Sarah, Sarah, by the way, came over to me so that I could be heard on her mic. So thank you for that, Sarah. I do want to turn our attention, though, to the uh, the maps because there is a crash of some sort along 281 North up toward Thousand Oaks Drive. And you can see that the traffic is instantly slower there on those northbound lanes. This is backed up all the way to Bitters. So for two miles. So if you have plans to travel along 281 North, use some caution. We don't know exactly what kind of accident or how it happened, but there are, is water on the roads right now. Now, it's uh, not flooding or anything like that, but as you know, all it takes is a little bit of water for uh, cars to hydroplane. And you can see that right in that area, we've been dealing with some 
A light to moderate rainfall at times at the airport. We saw about two tenths of an inch of rain. Garden Ridge, Selma and up toward New Braunfels seeing that moderate rainfall right now. Otherwise around San Antonio, just some light passing rain and that kind of light passing rain is going to be the norm throughout the day today. We'll see coverage decrease a little bit this afternoon, but as we look a little bit to the north, most of that moderate rain is now falling near Austin, Kyle uh, and then up in the hill country, even some changeover to an icy mix. Now up in the hill country from Kerrville North, there could be a few sleep pellets today. But one thing I want to point out is as we look at the road temperatures, the roads themselves are still plenty warm. We've got road temperatures of about 39 40 degrees so above freezing so again we do not anticipate any kinds of issues from any sleet or icy mix up across the hill country even though that might be possible around san antonio this is going to stay a cold light rain today and again we're going to be seeing the uh, rainfall really start to taper off in coverage this evening and afternoon so going from about 80 percent through the midday into the afternoon we're only going to be seeing about 40 percent coverage so it'll still be possible that it'll be raining but the coverage will be less as we look at the weather setup across the nation big cold core of air up there a lot of lake effect snow across parts of the Great Lakes but really the south central Texas area and out toward east Texas that's where we're seeing a lot of the rain falling at the moment all because of this front that has been moving through there are parts of Texas like West Texas that are under a winter weather advisory if you're traveling across the state of Texas that's really the only area we'd have to look out for potential impacts from any kind of icy weather otherwise deep cold has set in across the United States really the only places that are uh, warm or pleasant right now is, is Florida and Florida is often warm and pleasant. Otherwise, we're looking at temperatures much below freezing across a good portion of the nation. Outside right now, there's the picture for you. Damp road conditions, raindrops on the camera, 41 degrees. Winds from the north make it feel like it's in the 30s and that's going to be a big story today too. The wind chill temperatures will fall throughout the day to near 40 degrees. Uh, or just stay steady at 40 and those winds gusting up to 30 miles per hour will make it feel like it's in your, the 30s all day long. So once again, as we look at the 12 hour forecast, we're going to be seeing most widespread coverage and rain through the midday hours. Then in the afternoon, coverage will reduce to about 40 to 50%, but it's going to stay cold. It's going to stay damp near 40 degrees for the remainder of the day for us. Tomorrow will only warm up to 45, not as much rain, but only a few isolated showers. And then on Monday, in the morning, that's when we could see some more rain showers work their way in before the rain finally moves out midday Monday and we finally start to see some sun Tuesday and Wednesday. Now Thanksgiving is going to be interesting. We could get up to 70 degrees before another cold front moves through Jonathan and Sarah, but this cold front, I don't think we're going to see it be as potently cold outside and rain chances look pretty slim on Thanksgiving Day itself. We did, however, just get the pollen count in and I'll have that in the next uh, couple of minutes here for us. Perfect. Thank you. Nonetheless, Sarah. drivers, be careful when you're out there. Sarah, sure. You know, I feel like sometimes changes in weather are a make for changes in driving patterns. So nonetheless, be safe. Absolutely. Yeah, so we can see that the roads out there are still wet. If we see any of other incidents pop up, we will let you know about them when we come back. And next, what to expect for the 50th annual, 50th annual American Music Awards happening tomorrow. Take a look at these lottery numbers. Pick three, one, two, four, fireball three, daily four, four, six, nine, four, fireball two. Cash five, those lucky numbers are two, three, eight, 28, and 33. Mega Millions, two, 14, 16, 38, 66. Mega Ball nine, and Mega Plier four. The 2022 American Music Awards are here, bringing the biggest and brightest artists in music under one roof. It's a music show that's fan driven. It's, it's for music lovers. The biggest award show where fans decide which music stars will take home the coveted award. Puerto Rican rapper and singing sensation Bad Bunny leads the pack with eight nominations, including his first nomination for Artist of the Year. If he can win in all of those categories, he'll tie music legends Michael Jackson and Whitney Houston in taking home the most AMAs in a single night. I can still make the hope they shimmer. 
Beyonce and Taylor Swift are the most nominated female artists this year with six each, and they'll be facing off in the Artist of the Year, Favorite Female Pop Artists, and Favorite Pop Album Categories. Taylor, Harry Styles, Beyonce, Adele, the, the ones with the fan armies tend to be the ones who do the best on this show. Hosting the ceremonies, comedian Wayne Brady. It's big leagues personally for me because it's a music show and it's a, and music is, I dare say my first love. Seven-time winner Lionel Richie will also be honored with the prestigious Icon Award, and Stevie Wonder and Charlie Puth will deliver live performances of Lionel's biggest hits. Morgan Norwood, ABC News, Los Angeles. We want to get back out to that crash that Sarah was talking about on the far north side. This is the northbound lanes of 281 near Loop 1604 near the Thousand Oaks exit the northbound lanes have been closed down. That's right. Uh, they are reporting that the 18-wheeler did fall off. Right now, no injuries or no known injuries are being reported. Again, those northbound lanes are closed off. They're working on uh, getting in some heavy equipment, so there may be some de delays uh, for the foreseeable future here this morning. Just stay with us on air and online, and we'll bring you those updates. We'll be right back. We'll be dealing with on and off light to moderate rain like we're seeing right now over San Antonio throughout the day. This is causing problems. A jackknife trailer on the 281 northbound lanes at Thousand Oaks backing up traffic all the way to Bitters. Those northbound lanes are closed, so keep that in mind if you had to have to head north along 281. 80% coverage of rain through the midday hours, less coverage in the afternoon, blustery and cold near 40 degrees all day, gusts up to 30 miles per hour. Molds are low, and as we look at the forecast, similar weather tomorrow, we'll be looking at finally clearing skies Tuesday and Wednesday. Thanks so much for joining us for GMSA. Hey, it's David Elder, and today on Texas Eats, we're traveling all across the Lone Star State looking for great restaurants you won't want to miss. Get ready for an Alamo City hidden gem serving up pizzas and steaks with the French flair. Give me this sauce right here. This is it. Oh, my goodness. Plus, we're heating things up in the Texas Eats outdoor kitchen with Chef Nicola Black of the Jerk Chef. You already know. That's delicious. Wow. And we're headed to a Hill Country Brew Pub for craft beers and creative burgers. This is our CCB Goat Burger. 70% Windy Hill Foods Goat and 30% Augustus Grass Fed Beef. All that and more right now on Texas Eats. Stop on today's foodie adventures on the north side of San Antonio at a classic New York diner. Let's go inside Max and Louis. Joining me now is the owner out here at the restaurant, Drew Glick. Thank you so much for having us All out right. here. Good and, to see you. you. Know, right in front of us, baked goods. We're inside of the bakery portion of the restaurant. And this is so much stuff. What are some of the new things that you brought to the menu? You know, some of the things like our challah bread here, we bake a thousand loaves of this challah a wow. week to make our French toast and all our other items that go with challah. Right. And then all these baked goods we make from scratch. Uh, Italian cookies, icebox cookies. This is an Eastern European sweet bread called babka. There's so many things that we're gonna go check out, but the kitchen is where the magic is happening. Absolutely. And that's where we're gonna go next, it's right? It's exciting. Now we're inside the kitchen here at Max and Louis, and I'm so excited to see the three items that you're gonna be making for us today. What's the first one? First one is what we call our Max and Louis. It's a half a pound burger, triple decker, with a Reuben on top. Our half pound Angus burgers go on the flat top. This is our famous rye bread. So we flip it, and then cheese, cheese, cheese. Yes, cheese. We put a little thousand on the sandwich. And then we take this uh, burger, put it right on here. Another touch of thousand. We put the next slice of bread. Almost forgot another thousand. <laughs> and there's your pastrami and our sauerkraut. And guess what's next? Thousand Island. Gotta have a little Thousand Island. Juice it up. And then that goes right in here, just like this. That looks incredible. Yeah. All right, here we go. Cheers okay. to you. The Max Cheers. and Louie. The Max and Louie. 
Oh my goodness. The Max and Louis sandwich is incredible out here. The pastrami that's getting sourced right from New York coming in with the sauerkraut. Then you have that rye bread that's toasted on there, Swiss cheese, and the patty that comes on there. Now they get a little bit of char flavor on the grill, flip it, finish it on the flat top. You put that all together with that pickle on there as well that's sourced from New York. Absolutely incredible. The whole thing just works. It's a lot of sandwich, but if you're feeling extra hungry, that's the one to get. All right, what is the next item you're gonna be showing us here? So we call it the BFS. What does that stand for? Burger, fries, shake. So these are our brioche buns that we bake in-house. Okay, what kind of cheese are you putting on this here? This is Swiss cheese. All right. Fries. All right, so that's the F, and this right here is the S. You got the shake already made. So here's the shake. I made a vanilla shake. We put a little chocolate drizzle on the glass. So these go in here, just like so. Oh my gosh. Here's our burger. And I'm gonna just grab some tomatoes and some lettuce. All right, okay. pickle knife on top. Pickle knife on top. And now we take this, and believe it or not, that goes on top of that. We give a little push. to so fries. burger, fries, shake. shake. So the concept is grab the burger, and that goes on here. Take a sip of your shake. I think you need a fry. Yep. And then it's time for the burger. Burger, fries. Cheeseburgers, french fries, milkshakes, it's just a classic combination. On top, you get a cone of french fries. On top of that, you get your burger. And it comes out in this really cool presentation, just like a tower, right? And you know those milkshakes are made 100% real milk, real ice cream. It is just delicious. So this is the Robert Stack. Now, yep. it is like basically all of your brunch items combined into one food challenge, right? Talk to me about the layers and how you build it. So these are our famous pancakes, totally, totally from scratch. I love it. So this is our waffle. Four link sausage, three pancakes, four or whatever we end up putting on <laughs> of bacon. This is the uh, French toast. Now we got three sunny side up eggs. Watch the hand. And then of course, don't forget the powdered sugar. It comes with the syrup like this, but David and I are gonna have some fun. And you know my favorite part about this dish is that it is a food challenge. What do they win if they finish it? They have 25 minutes to finish it. If they finish it, they get it for free. Oh, wow, okay. And a Max and Louis t-shirt. You know what, that's a pretty good deal. I mean, you got this all prepared, this is the bite. The Robert Stack is a food challenge out here at Max and Louis. It's like all of your favorite brunch items crammed into one dish. You have the waffle, the pancakes, the French toast, eggs, bacon, sausage, and a chicken strip on top of that with the orange peel that's on there as well. You have to finish that. You have that butter and maple syrup that goes on there, powdered sugar. This thing is over the top now. More than 100 people have attempted this food challenge. Less than 10 have actually done it. Drew, thank you so much for having us out here. Oh, my pleasure. You guys, Max and Louis, it has so much variety on the menu. You also have Italian dishes, including a calzone that's loaded up Philly cheesesteak style and spaghetti and meatballs. Some of the biggest meatballs you're gonna find in town. This is where you gotta go. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I always have a great time. I'm gonna end it here though. I gotta go in and try one of these guys. They just look so good, covered in the Parmesan cheese. Oh my gosh, that's, that's a half a meatball. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know me? I'm good. Now, we're headed to Beacon Hill in San Antonio to check out a hidden gem serving up pizzas and steaks with a French flair. Let's go inside So Hill Cafe. <laughs> Joining me now is the owner and chef Jean-Francois, thank you so much for having us out here. My pleasure, David. Right in front of us, pizzas, burgers, steaks. It's exactly what people want when they come out to the cafe. How did this all get started? I've been in the restaurant business all my life since I came in the US. In 2007, I decided to open my first restaurant. I kept on going ever since and always trying to uh, introduce new food to San Antonian. It just looks amazing and smells incredible. I want to start with the pizzas. And this big one right here, this is kind of like a little bit of everything out of the kitchen, right? It's kind of like our own little Frankenstein creation that we put together. It, it, it would be a little bit more like a Italian Frankenstein creation. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna try it together. So when you come in here, you gotta ask, what the one that we saw on the show, 
because this one's kind of a little bit of everything. I see a little bit of sausage. Yes. Then you get some pancetta, you add some hot capacola, banana peppers, jalapenos, and arugula to finish it. Cheers. Cheers. That's the bite. Woo! The pizzas out here are delicious. You have a sourdough based on the crust. It is fantastic. Nice and chewy on the inside, on the outside, nice and crisp. On top, you can get these things loaded up however you want. I went with the house-made sausage, sun-dried tomatoes, the banana peppers, the jalapenos, and the arugula on there. Incredible. Now the burger, you're using a high quality meat on this one, right? That's correct. My son loves burger, so I decided to go with uh, the best beef we can get. So we go with Wagyu burger. Very simple lettuce, tomato, good cheddar cheese. It's simplicity done right. All right, go ahead and grab that half. Look at the inside, cooked really nice. I mean, you're looking at about a medium finish on the patty itself. And then you got the tomatoes, the fresh produce, the lettuce. Then you got the cheese on there melted nicely. Cheers to you. Cheers. The Wagyu burger, here we go. Oh. Mm, I love that. This Wagyu burger is incredible. The cheddar cheese on there melted nice. On the inside, that cross section, you can see they're cooking it to a perfect medium. It is such a great bite. Toasted bread, lettuce, tomatoes, sauce on there as well. You get the fries on the side. Great, great burger. Incredible, great job. You also have traditional fries and those come with the steaks. Now you were talking about the steaks. They're not just your average run of the mill steaks. You're actually locally sourcing them out of Austin, right? That's correct, yes. One is a traditional, we have the value steak, which is a culotte. It's a different cut, very tender as well. We cook it sous vide to ensure a perfect medium rare and we top it with a nice house-made peppercorn sauce. All right, so here we go. You have that nice little peppercorn sauce, like you said, right here made in house, poured right on top. A little steak and frites, right? You got the little uh, potatoes on the side as well. Cheers, and I'm gonna dip it in here. You want to get a little dip action on there? Come on, get some more sauce on there. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That's the bite. Oh. More love. Like <laughs> Give me this sauce right here. This is it. Oh my goodness. Last steak over by you. Which cut is this? Okay, this is a New York strip, and we're gonna go in for it. Look at that. Great finish on there. Fat is rendered nicely as well. Cheers. Cheers. New York Strip, another option when you come out here for the steaks. That's a great steak. Good job, chef. There's a couple different steaks on the menu. The Coulotte steaks, a really nice cut, nice marbleization on the inside as well. And they're getting it from a locally sourced butcher, which makes it even that much better. They're sous vide the steak, so you're gonna get it cooked perfectly on the outside, nice and seared. You serve it up with that peppercorn sauce on there. You get the fries on the side. You can also get the New York strip here, fries on the side. New York strip has a nice fat cap on the top, really simply seasoned, grilled to perfection. You can't go wrong here. Cheers. Thank you so much for having us out here. So Hill Cafe, you can get burgers, you can get pizza, you can get great steaks, happy hours all the time as well. Thank you so much for everything. I mean, right here in Beacon Hill, you gotta come out and enjoy yourself. Since 2018, you guys have just been rocking it out here. Thank you. Thank you so much. Later on Texas Eats, we're heating things up in the Texas Eats Outdoor Kitchen with Chef Nicola Black of the Jerk Shack. You already know, that's delicious, wow. And next on the show, we're headed to a Hill Country Brew Pub for craft beers and creative burgers. This is our CCB Goat Burger, 70% Windy Hill Foods Goat and 30% Augustus Grass-Fed Beef. So don't go anywhere, Texas Eats will be right back.